welcome back to the job site. Today we are installing a lot of trim here at this house. We've torn a lot of the trim out. You can see over here we have a big pile of trim and doors that we're taking out. And then also we're putting stuff in too. We retrim the windows. But there's this one window on the stairwell. I'm basically gonna trim this window out, but I'm gonna do it all outside and just pop this thing in in one piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you that window, show you the position, and you'll see why here in a second, why I don't wanna cut each piece singly at one time because it's such an awkward position. And then, um, hopefully we could just pop this thing in in one piece. I'm just gonna build it out here, here on the porch or something put the casing on it and everything and just slide it in. So I'll show you that stairwell. Let's check it out. So you come around these stairs up here. There's a window at the top. Way up there. And then I built this little jig here not OSHA approved or anything just so I could have the ladder level on there it's an eight foot ladder it's gonna lean on that wall and go up to that window so I'll show you that Okay, so what I'm going to be making this window frame and casing out of is this one by six right here, and then also this casing here. This is a two and a half inch, just regular, pretty regular casing, and then a one by six finger joint pine. Uh, this is really five and a half, so I'm going to have to rip this down to five and a quarter because that's the inside jam of that, the inside width of that window jam inside there. But before I do that, I am going to go ahead and cut all the pieces to their links and then I'll rip them to their widths because I don't have a lot of room here where I'm working where I can just run that whole 16 footer through. I would actually have to run both 16s. So that's the way I'm gonna do this right here and then just real quick what I always like to do before I start on something like this is just draw a really quick sketch nothing fancy just to make sure I got my head wrapped around what I'm about to do so I'm just gonna sketch that window and it's 71 inches long ways of the rectangular window and then 23 inches short ways and vertical so we got 71 by 23 and then what I'll need to do since I'm going to be nailing these boards into each other for the inside jam I need to subtract three quarters off each side of one of these and I'm going to do that from the 71 and the reason I'm doing that is because this material is three quarters of an inch thick so if I take off two of those I'll have an inch and a half to make it fit properly. So what we'll do is we'll do 71 minus an inch and a half and then this 23 for the height will stay the same. But that's just my little game plan that I do real quick. So we'll do 71 and then we'll minus that inch and a half and that would give us 69 and a half. So now I know what I need. I need two pieces at 69 and a half, and then I also need um, two pieces at 23. Those are going to stay the same. And then I need to rip both of those down to five, or all four of those down to five and a quarter inches. 
So with that, I'm gonna get started ripping and cutting this stuff up. And one thing I always like to do is, even when you got a big 16 footer like this one, you definitely wanna cut that factory edge. Uh, this comes from the supply house with a supposedly a straight edge, but I've learned not to trust it. So we'll just chop that right through. And we'll go to our 69 and a half. No, this is kind of hard to see, but that's 69 and a half right there. We'll cut right on our line, right to that line. So that's one ready to rip. One more at 23. So this is everything I need to make this unit. Now I just gotta rip this stuff down to five and a quarter. And we should be good to go. I can start nailing this thing together with some Brad nails. So there's the pieces I just cut and ripped. We got our 23 inches on the sides and then our 69 and a half on the long um, horizontals. So I'm just working right here on the porch and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna hold this square in one of these corners and making sure that it's square. One other thing I need to make sure of is that these 23s are on the outside and the 69 and a half are on the inside and I'm just using the 18 gauge brad nail I'm going to make sure these are flush and square and then I'm going to go ahead and get this thing nailed together One other thing I'm making sure I do is the side that I ripped on the table saw is not the finished side. So just make sure, I'm just making sure that the smooth side, the factory edge, is, they're all on one side so I can then use that side as my finished side. And the other side is going to be obviously against that window frame and no one's ever going to see it. Okay, so now that we have our unit nailed together, so I got this casing, it's just a two and a half inch, but it is going to go around the edge like a frame. And we're always gonna want that 3 16 of an inch reveal. And I got a really good way that I get that reveal. I use this Craig, I think it's called a Multimark. And this thing is pretty cool. It does a few little things. I'll have a link in the description for this product, but this measurement all the way around this this kind of cutaway area here that's all 3 16 of an inch so all you got to do is put these nails down for a second you're just going to take this up to your door casing or whatever it is hold it and then mark it and then you can see right there that is where my miters need to line up and it gives us the perfect reveal in here. And I'm gonna go around and do that to the whole unit. And I call this a unit now because when I order my doors from the door company, they call them door units and they're pre-built like this. So that's why you hear me saying that. So 
So now all I got to do is measure from each each inter, uh, point of intersection on those marks, and then I can trim this out, and we'll see how good it fits when we slide it in. So now what I can do is measure from this point of intersection to this one, and all the way down there, and we'll be able to frame this thing out perfectly with some 45 miters. But since I got this piece already mitered here, I'm just gonna hold that one up and pencil mark it. And then I'll measure the rest off that. So I'm gonna switch out these big two inch nails. Just put some smaller, I think these are inch and a quarter. And then we will just get on our pencil line. Sounds good. Yeah, it's actually easier for me to just, instead of measuring for these at least, the short ones, I'm just gonna have a miter cut on one side and then just mark it on the other side. A little bit easier. And one thing I'll do with this other small side first is I'll just kind of line up the inside of those miters and just make sure that they're the same because that's going to throw off my long ones if they're not. And they are. They're like dead on. So I'm good to go there. And the same thing. Just going to shoot this one in. Lying it up on those those pencil lines that I made. Since this is so long I'm just going to glide it across with the pencil. Because with these pieces being so long and this kind of bends a little bit it's good to have that reference line all the way across. The reason I was putting these in first, the small ones, is because it's easier for me, I believe, to just hook this tape measure on the end of that, the toe of that miter over there and get a measurement to the outside of the miter rather than trying to get in on the heel where it's like a little bit harder to see it. And I just feel more comfortable making those cuts. I feel like more accurate that way. Maybe it's just personal preference. But you can see how that lines up. So that's all the casing installed. And then I'm just going to run around that, that reference line right there. Put some uh, inch and a quarter 18 gauge nails in there too. So that doesn't go anywhere. We're good to go. But I think what we're going to do, we're probably going to get the big camera out and go up to that stairwell and see if this thing fits in. Okay. So this is going to be a little tricky getting up there with this, but I think I can manage. I'll just lean it right here for a second. Okay. See if we can get this first try. That'll do it, boys. Nice snug fit. So that means my, the inside of the window jam was a good measurement, that five and a quarter, and everything else is matching up good. This window in particular had a really thick 
um, trim all the way around it on the actual window itself. So that's why I was able to use that three quarter inch material. Usually, you know, you can't really get away with that because it's so thin, but these new windows gave you plenty, gave us plenty of room to make that happen. So now that it's snug, I got my gun right here. I'll go ahead and shoot this in. There you have it. So one little trick you can do to, uh, if you don't want to be going up and down this all day long, which I didn't, then you can just build a window surround, basically a whole unit, just slide it in. Just double check those measurements because you definitely don't want to be making this thing two times. So yeah, it works. Thanks so much for watching this video. That's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing us do that. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty cool way to frame out a window in one piece, kind of save some time. Plus just showing you guys another way to do things. Uh, all the tools that I used in this video will be in the description below. Also, let me know what you think about the GoPro style videos with the chest camera and stuff like that. Uh, just leave a comment if you like it, if you don't like it. Just let me know. I might may start doing more kind of hands-on videos like that. But anyways, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.